How y'all doing today? Good. Good. The good news is that Will Bolston has an interception. The bad news is is that he has more than your starting secondary. That's a problem. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I, maybe it's an anomaly, but right coverage and rush, we know all those things kind of work together. He has played a lot of zone. Um, Coach Bowles talked about bad eyes. Like, can you just sort of, when you look at it, like, why aren't, because you've got some talented corners and safeties, why aren't they getting closer to the football? Well, some of the things we looked at is some of the matchups. We like, we love our corners. We like to be able to put them in man all day. But from our standpoint of when you look at it, you don't want to create a bad matchup somewhere else. So that gives us a little off kilter. And then a lot of picks come from zones, being good zone drops. And this one right now, we're a little off. We'd have great zone drops, poor rush. Then we'd have poor rush, a good rush, uh, excuse me, vice versa, good coverage and poor rush. So it all works hand in hand. And, you know, we like to be a defense that mixes because we want to pressure you, pressure with zone, pressure you with man. So right now, until we can get that cleaned up, we're a little off kilter. Casey, norm normally you get excited facing a rookie quarterback or a young quarterback, but it seems like C.J. Stroud has been so good about limiting his mistakes, uh, playing kind of disciplined football. What, what stands out when you see what he's been able to do? When you watch them, they're doing a great job with this young quarterback. And we played a couple of young quarterbacks this year. But when you watch them, they are he is actually playing quarterback. We play some young quarterbacks where it's run, run, though. You know, it is very vanilla about it. But with this guy and watching him on tape, he gets the whole gamut. He ain't just throwing flat routes. He's throwing over the middle. He's throwing it deep. He's utilizing all his weapons. Then he can make plays with his feet if he has to. But he is truly playing quarterback. Us as a staff, this defensive staff sitting there evaluating, we think he has a bright future. He's a, They're doing a great job implementing him in their scheme, and he's doing a great job playing quarterback. In terms of the pass rush, Vita Vea leads the team. Is that a sign of, in the number of sacks, um, is that a sign of Vita just being a game disruptor week in or week out, or maybe not getting enough production from your outside linebackers or some other pass rush? Well, us as far as sacks, we always want more. And right now, one, Vita's a, a tremendous, a, extremely talented player. But, you know, right now with our outside linebackers, of course, we want them to win more, you know what I'm saying? We, but now as we look at it, we have to look at it with, right, you know, we just played a game last week and the ball was coming out pretty fast on that, you know, so, so it's hard to judge them off of that. You know, you took two steps and the ball was gone on the RPO type action that they were doing. So the, it, it all works hand in hand. And we've said it over the year and we've seen it. Sacks come in bunches. You look around, you had two this game, next thing you could have eight. They come in bunch, but the thing is, what we see in practice is they're steady working at it and this and that, and it'll translate to the to the field. Do you see uh, really improving each week as a as a pass rusher? Who? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, this guy, that's the thing we're struggling with right now is trying to find an ideal role for him because he is getting better week in and reach out. But being a young player, you don't want to overload him from the standpoint. Now you're an outside linebacker. You drop, you got a seam two, then you got a rush. Now we're going to put you inside in the rush to, to just help get you on the field. It, then it becomes too much, and we, we don't want to stun him. We like his, his progress that he's making, so you don't want to stun him with overloading him. But this guy has a bright future. You're keeping him outside. Primarily. Keeping him outside primarily. But that's the thing. That's the problem we kind of run into because you really want him on the field. But then, you know, we're blessed to have guys that you don't want to take off the field either. So that that's a good problem. I know you have a lot to look at with this defense, but Antoine Winfield Jr. just every single week is is making play after play. Is this some of the best football you've ever seen him play in his career? Hands down. But the thing is, since we got him as a rookie, it is the same thing. But the the, the unique thing about him, like we were just talking about, when you watch practice tape, you see exactly what you see on the game. We just finished practice, and the plays you see him, I just saw him make two in practice today. He is the same guy. That's when you say he's an excellent pro because he practices hard, and what you get in practice, you're going to get in the game. And just a true pro and a great human being. 
Anything else? Coach, you mentioned uh, C.J. Stroud earlier. What can you say about some of the weapons he has to throw to, such as Nico Collins, who is really having a breakout year, and Tank Dell, who's kind of like Devin Tompkins, like their own version? No question. Well, what we look at them, and we have to look at the similarities. We look at us playing San Francisco last year because a lot of the scheme is the same carryover. When we were looking at them using Dale like they're – a Debo, so to, so to speak, the way they use him on the jet sweep. He comes in, he could be at the backfield, he could take a toss. And then uh, Collins, he's just really, really come on. He's like their IU, the way they utilize him in the thing. But he is really making big plays and stretching people down the field. And he's long, you know, so short corners. Got probably, fortunately, we have long corners, but he is he is really stepping up. But that's kind of go along to what we're saying, all the weapons and the way they're utilizing them. They're – you can see their team, everybody has a role, and everybody is executing their role. Number three is their gadget guy. He's their reverse guy. He's jet sweet. He can be anywhere. He can be a bad matchup. So here lies our problem when he's in the backfield, who's covering him? Is he on the linebacker or he's on the DB? You really want him on the DB, but now you're getting your run fit screwed up. They have a unique scheme, and the thing you like about them or appreciate what they do is the way they are utilizing their pieces. Thank you. Thank you.